up guys today here on 3d printing for money we are talking about shipping i'm richard let's get down to business shipping stuff around the globe is expensive boring and sucks out a lot of time but besides this, shipping is the link between your products and your customers. And as I see it, the weak link. I'm amazed why nobody is talking on how to manage shipping procedures, shipping costs, and use international shipping to optimize your business reach. I had a chat with many people in the 3D printing world and with people in the e-commerce not related to 3D printing, and a lot of them are still afraid of long-range shipping. I understand that fear, the fear of losing a package, special occasion gifts delayed, or worse than all, a bad handling that destroys the package and what's inside. In today's video, I'll show you clever solutions that you can apply right now for getting more business. You can't miss on doubling your revenue only because you don't want to sell overseas. So let's get started with some best practices to ship overseas and internationally. Best practice number one, offer tracked shipping. Tracked shipping makes the customer feel more in control and after they send you the payment, they committed to the purchase. On your behalf, adding tracking makes them understand that you care and gives the customer the perception of having control on their stuff anywhere and anytime. Other than tracking, a big thing is insurance. Best practice number two, insurance on shipping. In the big leagues, companies that ship containers have always an insurance on container shipping. If the boat sinks or gets delayed, they have a partial or total refund on the shipping cost and goods value. For protecting your business, it's good practice that you have insurance. If for some reason the package got lost or the item damaged and you have to make a refund to the customer, you can file a claim to the shipping company and with tracking and the insurance, you will be eligible for a full refund. It happened to me more than once that an $80 package got lost. Shipping company messed something up and the customer was furious. But having bought insurance on the package, usually it's around 1% of total value, I made the refund to the customer and I didn't lose $80. At the end of the day, you pay a little amount for peace of mind and your business is covered from potential loss. Besides best practices, maybe you are more interested on the money side. Shipping overseas sometimes can be very expensive, almost as the item you're selling. Shipping fairly small boxes can cost you even $30 and just adding this cost to the item will probably kill the sale. Let's see three ways to get cheaper shipping. Method number one, use shipping providers. Some marketplaces like Etsy and eBay offer partnership with shipping providers. Shipping providers are like middlemen. They make deals with shipping companies to have better fares. For a small markup, they allow you to have very good pricing for international shipping. This is the perfect way when starting out. You will be guided in all the steps and you will be providing instructions on what to do. Method number two, use independent websites to control prices and get better rates. For more than one reason, sometimes the forwarder price isn't the best available. When making unusual shipping, I always double check the cost on different websites. I found out that a two minute check can save you up even 10 bucks. And if you're making hundreds of shippings a month, investing a couple of minutes can result in a lot of money saved. Method number three, ship directly with big shipping companies. This method is worth it only for very high volume businesses. If you show up at DHL, UPS, FedEx, and other big fish in the industry and say, hey, I want to ship with you, they will say, yeah, no problem. Here's your customer code. This is our website, bye bye. And at the end of the day, you will get ripped off. Why? They don't really care if you do a couple of shippings a month. If you want to have very good shipping deals, you will have to prove your shipping history and grant a minimum number of monthly shippings. Big shipping companies make deals only with big players. So if you are a big player, start with method number one or two. 
Let's see some marketing to make shipping less impressive to the customer. Tip number one, incorporate part of the shipping cost and the item cost to make it less impressive. If you want to sell a $30 item and you have $25 in shipping, if you state 30 plus 25 in your shop, your potential customer will make a stink face and pass. But price the item at 49 plus 4.99 for shipping and you made two things. You brought up the perceived value of the item and you made shipping more reasonable for the customer. There is no real difference, only the perception of a better valued item. Tip number two, offer free shipping, but only on tested articles. Amazon killed the concept of having to pay for shipping and we got used it to buy stuff and having free shipping. They charge the Amazon Prime annual fee and you have free shipping on many items. For handmade and 3D printed items, you aren't technically offering a service like Amazon Prime, annual subscription, nor have the Amazon reach and scale factor. You can englobe all the costs and the item price and label it free shipping. You can try it, but in my experience, I had mixed results. Some items sold well, others didn't. I think that it mostly depends by the market and item value. Tip number three, what to avoid. In our fast pacing world, a long delivery time are sales killers. Ramp up your production, decrease in lead time or use faster shipping. If you want to go cheap, you can always fall back on international airmail for small packages, but items can take up to four weeks for delivery, even worse during holiday season. When was the last time you were willing to wait four weeks for having something delivered? So try to stay away and focus on delivering items faster to your customers. Do you like this principle so far? Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Packaging. Packaging is a P-E-T-A. I know you know what it means. A good packaging is required to deliver safely the item in the customer's hands. Costs can ramp up very quickly. Other than boxes, when you start adding bubble wrapping, foam, adhesive tape, packaging, thank you cards, things can get very pricey. Instead of buying boxes off Amazon or at your local hardware store, I suggest to get boxes from companies that are specialized in making boxes. If on Amazon a 10 box pack costs you $10, I scouted a box company near me that sells a 100 pack at 33 cents each. For 100 boxes, just switching websites, I got a 67% cost reduction. Do some research to get the best box at the lowest price. Boxes are commodities and being ripped off just because it's on Amazon ain't funny. The same goes for wrapping. At the local hardware store, 25 meters of low density bubbles cost me 25 bucks. But on specialized websites, I pay 24 bucks for 100 meters, about four times less. These are small ways I optimize packaging costs. But before making a full comparison, let's see another way to improve shipping. Shipping labels can be another pain in the butt. Your best friend is a label printer, like this one. It saves times and the labels are dirt cheap. You can go fancy with a bigger model, but at the end it depends on your needs. If you are on a budget, you can always write by hand, but it will take you ages and it isn't really professional. Another thing that's a huge pain to deal with is custom export import documents. If you are exporting out of your country, you will need export documents attached to the package. These documents state who is the sender, who is the receiver, and what's inside the package with a standardized international code. I will put a link for a sample document I use with regular invoices. If you don't know the tariff code for your item, I suggest you type your item or similar words at tariff.com. This website give you a ton of possible results for codes suited for your products. Now let's make an easy calculation for a rounded number. Let's say 100 shippings a month. On the left, we have the off the shelf items. And on the right, the specialized item scouted looking around. As you can see, there are 100 boxes, plus bubbles, plus tape, plus thank you cards, plus label and paper documents. 
going with off the shelf items will cost you 140 bucks and making some research 45 bucks about 100 dollars a month save it just making some research and this is only for 100 shippings if you ship 1000 packages a month we are talking about one grand left in your pocket to do other things what will you do with an extra grand every month do your math we saw all the bulk of shipping but i'll leave the most important thing for last being shipping cost beyond your control the only thing that you can do is design with shipping in mind if you do some iterations and find that items over a certain weight or volume are too expensive to ship design those pieces including packaging that will comply with that shipping class i learned this little trick years ago and when designing pieces today i design with shipping in mind creativity combining with business in today's world has boundaries but that's not always a bad thing maybe in the future shipping won't be necessary to get things delivered we will have everything teleported at our door but for now teleporting is still far away so get all this advice and apply them in your 3d printing venture for today it's all see you in the next one richard out